What's up, y'all? It's me and all my ashy, busted, and disgusted glory here. I'm just going in right now with a little moisturizer. Put some moisture back into my skin. I had already cleansed it at this point. I'm using the Urban RX Complexion Protection Moisturizer. And also, you know, you got to get them lips moisturized as well. I'm going in with this lip shine from Bath & Body Works. It's the Menthol Supreme one. Um, it has like the menthol in it. It gives your lips a nice tingly feeling. I really like it. I keep it with me at all times. Now I'm going to try to get these brows together. I've been using the um, Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. Yeah, Brow Freeze Wax. And it's really, really been helping me out a lot. Um, my brows are very uneven. The arches are off. One is longer than the other one. One kind of has a tail. One doesn't. It's just a lot going on with them. I have a hard time kind of getting them together and getting them as ev even as I can. And this product really does help me out a lot. I'm just brushing the product in right now and getting them all to kind of stand up. And then I'm going to go in with my little scissors and kind of cut off those longer hairs to try to get them as even, even as possible. Now I'm a little extra when it comes to my brows. I actually use three different pencils. Um, I mean, I have some pomades and I do use pomades, but I just prefer a pencil for me. I can control it better. But the first pencil that I'm outlining it with is the brown black pencil from LA Colors. This is at all of the dollar stores, y'all, and it's only a dollar. All of the three pencils that I use are all a dollar and they're all at the dollar store. Now, on the tail end of my brow, I do go in with the black pencil, even though, you know, we're taught that black pencils on the eyebrows is a no-no. But I just only use it at the tail end. That's just because I really don't have a tail. And it's just so it can kind of, you know, stick out a little bit. And then I kind of fill in with the brown black pencil from LA Colors. And at the front of my brow, I go in with the Simmer Brown Now pencil from Wet n Wild. And it's um, lighter than the rest. And it's also really kind of lighter than my hairs. But it all blends in and gives me like the ombre effect that I like. And now it's time to conceal. I go over the top of my brows with the CoverGirl Chew Blend Undercover Concealer in the color Cappuccino. It's a tad bit lighter than my skin tone, but it all kind of blends in really good once I blend it out. I like for my brows to stand out on the top and the bottom because I know some people don't really go over their top with the concealer, but I prefer to. Um, and when I do go in with my concealer, I don't go in at the front at first I kind of start off in the middle just because I don't want a lot of concealer at the front of my brow if that makes sense and then I kind of go back in later with the leftover product on my brush to um, finish it at the front and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna conceal at the bottom of my brow and I'm gonna use the Juvia's Place concealer in the color J11 and it's the same thing at the bottom. I don't um, go in starting off at the front. I kind of work my way to the front. And I've also kind of discovered that less is more. I used to pack on so much concealer underneath my brow. But you really don't need that much. Just enough to get that straight line that you want and blend it out. Now I'm going to go in and just buff that concealer out using a Morphe brush. This is the Morphe M173 brush. Um, buffer brush. I really like this brush. I use it for a lot of different things, but mostly just to um, buff out my concealer underneath my brows, on top of my brows. And sometimes I use it to buff out my concealer underneath my eyes. Now I'm going to go in to conceal these dark eyelids of mine with the Juvia's Place Concealer in J10. And I'm just kind of moving this around to get it all around, get it even, and get a nice, clean, even base on my eyes so I can go in with my um, eyeshadows. Now I'm going to go in with my damp elf sponge just to finish buffing that concealer out. 
We're going to be using the nude addition to the DreamWork palette from the Bill Cosmetics BYL Bachelor Lashes. I am on their PR list. I have a coupon code with them and I will have it in the description box below so you can save you a few coins. Now we're going to go in with that color and we're just going to pack it into the crease. We're just focusing on getting the color on right now, not blending it out, just packing it on. Once I get the color on like I like, I'm going to go in and I'm going to slightly start to buff it out just with the light hand. Then we're going to get into the second eyeshadow palette. This eyeshadow, pa eyeshadow palette is from uh, BYL Cosmetics as well. And it's called the Botanical Escape Palette. Yeah, Botanical Escape Palette. I really love this eyeshadow palette and I love the shimmers in this palette. They're really, really pretty. I'm going to go in with like that orangey shade and we're going to blend out that purple color up top. And most of my eyeshadow brushes, you guys, are just regular Wet n Wild brushes. They're at CVS and Walgreens, four buck. Can't beat it. Now we're going to go into that same palette and we're going to go into that black color and we're just going to um, pack it onto the lid. Not necessarily giving it a shape, just packing it on. And I'm going to use that same blending brush that I used uh, for that purple in my crease to blend out that black. Now I'm just going to go in and line my eyes with the H2O proof uh, liquid eyeliner from Wait a While. Y'all, I cannot do a wing eyeliner to save my life. I want to so, so bad. I'm not giving up on it just yet, but my wings be busted. That'd be so bad. Okay guys, I'm just gonna add this clip to kind of show you how I mix my glitters. I have this glitter right here, which is Black Magic. It is from my line, it's an M Cosmetics, and I love it, it is so, so pretty. So I'm just gonna dump a little bit in here. Okay, now that is very, very pretty, you know, on its own, but you know me, I gotta be a little extra. I wanted to add some more. So I have this glitter right here. It's from uh, J. La Rue Cosmetics. Just, I will drop it. Here you go, just in case you've never heard of it. But they have bomb glitters and uh, pigments, especially the pigments. Okay, but this is a glitter called Confetti. And I'm just gonna add some of that in there. That is pretty. Now I'm just gonna go in and tap my brush with my duo glue. And I'm just gonna kind of tap that onto my lid. It's already just, you know, a tad bit tacky and kind of get it ready for the glitter. And I just go in and I just pack the glitter on y'all. Nothing, no type of technique to it. I'm just packing it on. Not necessarily trying to give it a shape, but you know, not trying to be too wild and all over the place with it. This is something that I also do, y'all, to try to prevent glitter from kind of falling over me all night wherever I'm going. Um, I just take like a regular eyeshadow brush and I just kind of just tap it on my eye just to try to remove some of the glitter pieces that may not um, have stuck or just kind of sitting up there because glitter is really, really messy, y'all, and it'd be like all over the place. So this is what I do to try to get all those little extra pieces out so they won't be falling all over me later on. And a good way to remove glitter once it falls on your face, get you a little bit of tape. I actually use tape when I get ready to take glitter off um, at the end of the night. I just put some on my eyelid, you know, rub it in and pull it off and it comes right off. So that's a good tip for removing glitter. Now I'm going to go in with my Wet n Wild Mega Length Mascara um, just to give my lashes a little bit of length and remove anything that may have fallen on them, you know, glitter or anything. And then I'm going to go in with uh, this primer. It's from Milani. It's called No Pore Zone. I have very, very large pores. Um, 
around my not on my nose but kind of around my nose area uh, a little bit above my lip and on my cheek area i'm currently going to an esthetician now i just started i actually had got my first chemical peel i was so upset y'all because i really didn't peel i peeled a little bit around my mouth as you can see it actually made my hyperpigmentation stand out um a little bit more because i only peeled in that area so my skin lightened up in that area but at the same time now it looks extremely light compared to the rest of my skin so i didn't peel on my cheeks i didn't really peel on my forehead or anything so hopefully my next one will be a little bit better I'll probably go in you know with maybe stronger chemicals maybe um i mean i'm glad my skin is kind of tough and it can handle it but i was i was very disappointed very very disappointed but yeah, if y'all know any products or any techniques that can kind of help me with my large pores or my texture on my skin to kind of give me like a flawless look, please uh, list it in the comments below. Help your girl out because y'all, I be struggling with this texture on my skin, y'all. Like it's so frustrated sometimes. Now I'm going to go in with the Milk um, Hydro Grip Primer. And I'm just going to use this at the perimeter of my face just only on the outside um i've noticed that when i use any type of pore filling product and i use this primer on top of it they don't really mix well and it kind of leaves like patches on my skin and you can see it once i put my makeup on so i only use it on the outside And now I'm just going in with a little light layer of calamine lotion just to kind of control that oil. I am oily in that area and you know oil and makeup does not mix. So I'm just going in with that just to kind of help control my oil. And I only do that when I know I'm going to have my um, makeup on for a long period of time. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my concealer and i'm going to conceal around my mouth um i have a lot of discoloration on my face but to me the discoloration around my mouth is what's standing out the most and i don't like it for it to show through my foundation but i also don't want to have to pack on a ridiculously large amount of foundation just to cover it up so i will go in and conceal beforehand just to kind of help myself out with it Now I'm going to go in with foundation. I use the uh, Superstay Full Coverage from Maybelline. And I use two different colors that I mix them together. I use the um, Deep Bronze and I use the um, Java, Hava, Java, however you say it. You know what I mean. I use one pump of each and I go in with my Julius Place foundation brush. And I just tap it in and I just tap it section by section. Um, I don't like to go in with too much foundation. But I do like to go section by seven, section by section just to make sure I'm giving myself enough coverage. I do kind of start to go into my neck area a little bit, but I don't go all the way in. As I'm pretty sure you've noticed, my um, neck is a lot darker than the rest of my body, face, um, chest, and all of that. I do have PCOS, and if you know PCOS, you know you know it has a lot of different effects but one of the things is it kind of sometimes makes your neck area a little darker and i don't like all that makeup all down my neck so that's just something that i just have to uh deal with so if you're thinking that you know i'm not blending in my makeup and it's different from my neck i'm not blending it in or i'm not matching it up no it's just darker and i just have accepted it and let it be now i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna conceal under my eye i'm going back in with the juvia's place um concealer and i'm going in with the j11 one i kind of use my concealer to go ahead and kind of start the contouring process because i go in to the outer edges of my nose with it and um i go in a little bit to give myself kind of that, that sharp 
line around my eyeshadow just to make it look a little bit neater. Now I'm going to go in and start the uh, blending process. I'm using this concealer brush that I got from Sephora. I actually kind of just bought this on a whim and I actually need to go back and get another one because I absolutely love this brush for uh, blending out my concealer. It will buff it out if you just keep it in that one spot and it also will move the concealer around if you need it to be moved around. Like I really, really, really love this brush a lot. Um, I always try to go in light with my concealer, but I always wind up going overboard. But that's something that I have to work on. But I do like a bright under eye. And I'm just kind of moving the concealer around where it needs to be, buffing it out where it needs to be. And um, as you can see, I have kind of a harsh line on my nose right now. But I kind of wait and buff out the rest of my face. And then I go back in my nose area and buff that line out so it can all kind of flow in together, as you can see. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to set my uh, concealer. I'm using the Loose Setting Powder from Black Radius. This is in the color uh, Honeymoon. I think they only have three different colors in this powder, if I'm not mistaken. This is like the one that's in the middle. They have like a yellow one and then they have one that's kind of darker. I really, really like this powder. I'm really not too good when it comes to powders, you know, just getting it to melt it to my skin maybe. Um... I like to pat it in with a brush rather than just kind of packing it on like I see a lot of people do with a uh, sponge. And I use my 9 a.m. brush from the crayon case to do so. Y'all, don't talk about my contouring because I'm, I'm really not too good at contouring. Um, I either wind up going in with a color that's too light or I go in with one that's too dark. Um, I have these two contour palettes from uh, Black Radiance. I have the dark to deep and I have the medium to dark and I sometimes just kind of mix the two and I try to go in with the light hand so it, so it won't be so harsh because when I try to go in with the lighter shade it seems like I don't see it and then when I try to go into a darker shade it seems like it's too much or too harsh so you know maybe I got to find a better product even though I really do like these palettes but I don't know and I'm using this uh, contour brush that I got from Morphe it is the E51 contour brush now I'm going to go into the um, Saharan Blush Volume 1 palette. And I'm going to take like that kind of dark brown shade and kind of go into my contour with it as well. It has a little red in it that I like and it brings a little, little color to my face. And I'm going to go into like that burnt orange type of color and that brownish type of color. I'm going to mix those two. And I'm going to just lightly, lightly go in with that blush, y'all. Like I hate harsh blush. Like, I, I want to be able to see the color, but just having that, that harsh, you know, color on my face, like, I really don't like that. Um, so I try to go in light because you can always build it up. But if you go in with too much at first, I mean, you know, you're done. But uh, I'm using this brush. Um, Where's this brush from? I got this brush. It's from the Royal and... Landical? Am I saying it right? Wait a minute, y'all. I got some of my brushes right here. I'm about to look and see. But anyway, it was like the pointed blush brush or whatever. I think it's the Royal and Royal and Landical. I think I'm saying it right. But they have those at Walmart and you can also order them online. I'm going in and setting my whole face with my um, Maybelline Fit Me powder. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to spray with that Morphe setting spray. Um... I got this on sale, y'all. You know, I know this is the one with the Jeffree Star. I'm not a Jeffree Star fan, but I mean, it was on sale. It was number $5. I got like eight of them. So, yeah, I'm going to use them. 
But um, I'm just going in with my little fan to try to dry my face off a little bit. And I'm not good at putting like the eyeshadow under my eye and making it look all cute like everybody else. So a lot of times when I like a little pop of color under my eye, I will go in with my uh, NYX Cosmetics um, eyeliners. I have them in all different type of colors. And that's what I'll use for that. And now I'm going in with these lashes. These lashes are actually from my line, y'all. S&M Cosmetics. I will have them linked below. And these are my bestseller. These are called the Victoria Lashes. And I'm going to go in with, you know, the all-time, you know, goat. The star glue. You can't go wrong with the star glue. It lasts like 174 years. You know, one pack, you'll have it forever. Now I'm going to go in um, with this highlighter from BYO Cosmetics. And this is called Venus. It's a really, really pretty light gold color. And I'm just going to go in and, you know, highlight all the typical areas. You know, the um, the temples, the nose, top of the cheek, top of the lip, a little bit between my eyes, you know. And now we're going to go in with the lips. These two lip uh, sticks are from my line as well. S&M Cosmetic. Get used to it because I'm going to say it a lot. But these lipsticks are bomb, y'all. They dry down really, really nice. And the first one I'm going to go in, I'm going to use it kind of like a lip liner. This is in the color Cocoa. I'm just going to line my lips with it. And then I'm going to go in with just like a little eyeshadow brush. And I'm going to buff it in just to kind of start the ombre effect going. Now I'm going to go in with the second color. The second color is called Nudist. And it's like a peachy, pinky type of nude. It's really, really pretty. And I'm going to go in with that same brush. And I'm going to blend that in. Making that kind of that ombre effect, which I love. Now that I, I do ombre lips, I can't really just put one color on my lips. And look at that, y'all. Isn't that pretty? That is bomb. I could have left it like that. But, you know, I want it to be a little glossy. Now I'm going to go in with the Crayon Case um, Lip Gloss. This is in the color Clean Kisses. And as you can see, it matches that um, nudist lipstick quite well. And y'all already know what that Beauty Supply lips, uh, Lip Gloss does. Yeah, I can't talk today for nothing. But, you know, it gives you that shine, that gloss what we like and there you have it getting my slow-mo on comb my hair y'all for like the first time in a week i gotta do better but yeah this is my look now i'm gonna go in y'all and i'm gonna show y'all how i got this hair together y'all like this was a quick weave that i had in my head i had done had it in my head for a month y'all a whole month it was pretty much falling apart it needed to be taken down but i wasn't ready to take it down and i really wanted to do this look so i had to get it together to make it look a little decent for y'all right now i'm just going in with that um that edge control um i am natural i've been natural for almost two years so a lot of products like a lot of edge controls don't really work for me but that edge control the um the first one, it does really, really good. What I usually have to do, I have to go in with like an edge control or I have to go in with a gel. I have to kind of brush my hair or comb my hair in place. And then I go in with the um, the earwax to kind of set it. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, I just went in with the first uh, edge control, tied it down, just showing y'all um, what heat tools I'm using, the tool signs. And then I'm going in with my OGs, y'all, the Tresemme. Like, I love the Tresemme products. Like, the, the spray, the holding spray can't be beat. And I'm going to try to clean that part up a little bit. I got some of my um my spray. Because I had an invisible part, y'all. Because, like I said, I am natural. And I didn't have a closure, so we just did an invisible part. And, I mean, my hair grew kind of quick, y'all. I'm kind of glad because I was thinking my hair wasn't growing. But anyway, after I set it, now I'm just going to go in with a little bit of that earwax. It's actually not a um edge control but that's what i use it for for my natural hair that loves to roll up with anything that i put in it this is like one of the only thing that works for me y'all and a little bit of it goes a long way like i said i go in with the edge control first or a gel i brush it into place i tie it down for maybe about five minutes and then i get my the earwax and i go over it the earwax is really really wet really sticky and it like sets it in place and it is a trick to making it work. Um, once you put that earwax on and you tie it down to try to set it, do not let it dry 
all the way while you have your scarf on. If you do, it will start to dry and your scarf will st try to stick to your head. That's just how sticky this stuff is. And when it dries down, it literally dries down. And I mean all of the way. Now, as long as you do those steps, like I said, and tie your hair up at night, your edges will literally stay in place for at least a good week. Like, no cap. No cap at all. Like, I swear by this stuff, y'all. It doesn't really smell too good. But like I said, a little bit goes a long way. So, you don't have to use much. So, here I am now. Just getting ready to tie it back down. And leave that scarf on for about five minutes, y'all. No more than that. No more at all. I'm telling you, I have glued my scarf to my head before. Trust me, five minutes is enough. More than enough. Now, look at this, y'all. Y'all see it was starting to stick to my head? I'm telling you, five minutes is all you need. Let it finish drying, um, and it will literally, like, stay right there. Now that I'm kind of looking at this video, I should have just let this hair go, y'all. Like, look at that part, y'all. That part was so busted. But I pushed through, you know, to get this video out to y'all. So, I'm just going to kind of comb that over so you can't really see those tracks. And it's really not that bad on the other side or whatever. So, we just going to work it out. Now I'm going in with this Tresemme heat protecting y'all and something that's kind of crazy that I discovered about this heat protecting. It's actually a really good detangler. If you have like an old wig or something that's kind of matted and you're trying to um, shake it back, spray some of that on there and it will literally detangle the hair so good for you. Like no lie. I am all about something that I can use for two to three different things. So a heat protectant that I can use as a detangler is all right in my book. So I always keep my um, Tresemme products with me. I love them. I love the holding spray. To me, it is just the best. Now I'm just going in with my Tool Science flat irons. I've had these flat irons for years, y'all, and I absolutely love them. They get really, really hot. And I'm not just, you know, doing too, too much. Because like I said, I, I actually have taken this hair out now. But um, I just wanted to kind of straighten it out and, you know, make it look good for the video, for the pictures, for the gram, you know. But I'm just kind of going in and just putting like a little slight bump to the hair. I'm going in with my uh, Tresemme. What I really, really like about the Tresemme spray is it gives you that hole, but it's not like a hole like spritz. Like it's a hole that it's like a soft hold, I guess you could say. And, you know, I could still brush it out and brush it another way if I chose to. But, you know, all I do is put a little heat to it, spray a little bit of that spray on there. And it literally like freezes it in place and keeps it exactly where I want it to be without it being all harsh and sticky and, you know, with the residue and things like that. That's why I really, really like it. When I first got my hair done, um, I had like a big bang that was kind of all in my face. And I used to love that when I was younger, but now that I'm older, like sometimes that hair gets to get on my nerves, y'all. Like the hair on my neck and the hair all in my face and stuff. And plus when I got on my long, you know, lashes trying to be all cute and whatnot, it literally kind of gets in the way and makes like your um your lash look a little droopy, which I don't like. So that's the reason why I bumped it the way I did, just to kind of keep it out of my eye. And there we have it, people, completely transformed. Thank y'all for staying on this ride with me. I will be uploading every Friday. Until then, peace, y'all. Have a good day.